Hey, it's Ryan with this week's Mille Lacs Fishing Report. It's early February and it's been cold out. We'll get started with the ice conditions. The ice has improved drastically over the last week. We've uh, seen a lot of the slush pockets starting to harden up. I've noticed that we're starting to make a pretty fair amount of ice over the last few days. A lot of what I've been finding out on the gravel bars and on the mud flats is ranging anywhere from 20 to 23 inches. So we're making improvements. And you can tell just simply by being out here in the middle of the lake, you can see resorts on all four sides of the lake right now plowing new trails much farther on into the lake than where they were earlier. So we're moving in the right direction as far as ice conditions go. I think the latter part of this season you're going to see a lot of the permanents and wheelhouses finally make their way out into the lake and start to spread out a little bit. As far as the snow conditions, a lot of what I'm finding on the lake is anywhere from four to five inches of pretty hard packed snow. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of people on four wheelers and side by sides making their way around out here. So the conditions are a lot better, but there's still a few slush pockets that I'd be mindful of. But Things are better and I think you're going to see a lot more wheel traffic making its way out here over the next few days. Now on to the fishing. Uh, I think the best way to break it down this week is to talk about the three main structures out here. The rocks, the gravel bars, and the mud flats. And there's bites going on all three. Earlier in January, you know, the first couple, three weeks in January, we were doing really well. The walleye bite was great out on the flats. Uh, there was some good stuff happening on the gravel bars too. As far as the rocks went, that was going earlier in December. I had some good luck on those, but they kind of slowed down once we got into January. What I'm seeing right now is all three of them go to kind of a morning, evening, and overnight bite. It's not to say you can't catch fish during the day, but we're in midwinter right now, and that's just kind of the way it is out here at this time. So if you're going to be fishing on the rocks, what I'd recommend doing is trying to find a transition or set yourself up on a point on the rocks. Uh, a lot of people that are in permanence right now, you don't have a lot of control over where you can set up simply because there's not a lot of roads. So what I would do is try to set yourself up on a good piece of structure, on a transition or an edge or a point, or if you find yourself around a crowd of people, maybe try to separate yourself away from the crowd a little bit, get to the outside edge of that commotion. That's going to be your best bet on the rocks. Expect a morning, evening, overnight bite. People that are fishing the gravel bars, a lot of the gravel bars right now don't have hardly any fishermen on them. They're pretty wide open. So if you're going to the gravel bars, what I would do is go right up on top. The daytime bite where I like to fish the transitions hasn't been all that spectacular on the gravel bars. So I would set up right up on top if you know where, the very, where they top out or if you know where there's any little rock piles right up on top of the gravel bars. Those are the sweet spots this time of year. That's where you're going to have the most activity at sunrise and sunset. And that's where you're going to get your bites on your rattle reels overnight. The mud flats are where I've been spending most of my time over the last few weeks. And they've been really good. Earlier in January, we were catching a lot of walleyes out on the flats. And we were having a riot out here. That bite is, it's tamed down. We're still getting some daytime walleyes, but we got to work a lot harder for them. What I'd recommend doing is if you are looking for a daytime walleye bite, I would come out to the flats, I would drill a lot of holes up and down the edges, drill holes on the points, try to find you know any piece of structure that stands out on that flat, and work your way up and down and try to move around and find aggressive fish. That's going to be the best way to catch daytime walleyes right now. If you're getting set up for the evening, I'd find a good point on the flats, and I'd put your fish house right on the end of that point, kind of on the edge, that 26 to 30 feet of water. That's going to be your best bet for catching walleyes morning, evening, or overnight on your rattle reels. The baits that we're using out here are kind of one of two things, which I use throughout most of the season. And that is going to be a set line, just a plain hook or a jig head with a shiner. Or the second thing that I use when I'm trying to be aggressive and find aggressive fish is going to be just the rattle spoon. Uh, I like flutter spoons early season, 
but once you get later into the season, I just tend to have better luck with those slab style rattle spoons. A quarter ounce rattle spoon with a minnow head is a great way to cover a lot of water, move from hole to hole quickly, and try to just drum up some aggressive fish. For the set lines, put those on your sweet spots, whether it be a point or an edge of the flat, or you can also put them right up on top, maybe try to get a roaming fish, but I tend to like to put them on points. What I like to put down there is about a three to four inch minnow. My favorite is a shiner, but shiners are really tough to come by right now. So if you can find a large fat head, which <laughs> even those can be a little tough to come by right now, just try to sort the bigger minnows out of your bucket, save those for your set line, put them on either a plain hook, like a little number four gami, or just a small jig head, a small glow jig. Set them up, that's a great way to catch walleyes this time of year. A lot of times that's gonna outproduce your jigging. Now, one more thing to touch on. The walleye bite is kind of tapered off out here. It's just done more of the midwinter thing, which is typical. It's nothing abnormal for Mille Lacs right now. But we've really seen the perch bite come around and make up for it. So it seems like every time the walleye bite slides a little bit, the perch bite comes right up and makes up for it. We've had some really good perch fishing days over the last couple of weeks, and it seems to be consistently better and better each time I come out. The perch, I'm fishing those one of two different ways. Uh, actually one of three different ways. You'll catch some perch on a set line and minnow. A lot of times that might be your biggest perch of the day. But the two ways that I tend to fish for them is, it, it's kind of a one-two approach. I like to use a bigger rattle spoon, a quarter ounce bright rattle spoon with a minnow head. Same thing I'm fishing for the walleyes. And then what I like to keep handy is just a small tungsten jig, a little number four or number five gold tungsten jig. When you get out to the edge of these flats, you're finding a lot of perch are hanging out in that 30 to 34 foot of water range. Just get on the edge of the flat, put your rattle spoon down, jig it up for a while, you know, three, four feet off the bottom until you get some activity below you. Then drop one of those little tungsten jigs with some bugs, some spikes or wax worms down there. A lot of times you find that those perch come into the rattle spoon and then they'll readily eat that little tungsten jig. It's a great way to get some eater fish, especially with your eater size walleyes. A lot of days out here, we were having some trouble getting some of those slot fish walleyes, so the perch are kind of the main course. But we've had days where we're putting quite a few of them in the bucket, and it's been a lot of fun. Hopefully these tips help you out, and good luck fishing.